Hi, my name's Omara. I'm a first year medical student at the University of Nottingham and I thought today I'd give you my tips on how you can prepare and hopefully ace your medical school interview, in particular the MMI, which was required by most medical schools in the UK. I've left timestamps in the descriptions if you're looking for specific advice so you can fast forward to that point. I'll also be splitting up the video into certain segments which will look at the different aspects you need to prepare for. My first tip before I get into any specific advice is that you start preparing as soon as you submit your UCAS application for medicine. So once that personal statement and admissions test is out the way, because for example, the University of Nottingham only gave me one week's notice of my medical school interview. This means that if I'd left it up to the point I'd gotten the offer, I would have had one week to prepare for the interview alongside juggling all the A-level schoolwork, which would be practically impossible to do. So prepare before you get any offers. So the structure of an MMI interview is that you'll have multiple stations, usually around 5 to 10, ranging from 3 to 10 minutes long. For example, my Exeter interview, each station was only 3 minutes long. My Nottingham interview, each station was 7 minutes long. Each station will be testing essentially completely different things. And you'll have one minute before each station where you'll be reading a prompt, which sort of tells you a bit about what that station is about. The first thing we'll look at is tackling personal styled questions. These questions involve the following. First, your motivation for medicine. This shows how genuine you are in wanting to study medicine and it just lets the interviewer get to know you a little bit more. Honestly, don't worry if you struggle with this question. It's not make or break. Your reasons for wanting to study medicine or how eloquently you can say them aren't gonna be what gets you into medical school or what doesn't. So if you struggle with this question, just like I did, don't worry too much. They might also ask you about your work and voluntary experience. I think this is one of the most important aspects to prepare for. This is used to show the examiner how committed you've been with your preparation to study medicine. It's because medicine, regretfully, is one of the most difficult and strenuous careers you can have. Thus, it is important that you are aware as a future medic what the downsides are and that you've been exposed to them through your work or voluntary experience because it means that you're more informed about your decision and therefore you're less likely to drop out. It also shows that you've started to develop the right skills you need to be a doctor, such as communication skills, empathy. You also have questions on teamwork and leadership this is so important because as a doctor every day you'll be working with other healthcare professionals thus it is imperative that you understand how important the other healthcare professionals are around you such as the nurses the occupational therapists the radiographers and that every person in the team is as valuable as each other another type of question you might get is on self-reflection this shows that you're self-aware that you know your strengths that you know your weaknesses and most importantly that you're able to grow from your mistakes and develop as a person as it's so important that a doctor does and it shows that you're aware of what resilience is the last one in this segment that they might ask about is medical school specific. So why do you want to go to this medical school? This one is the easiest one to prepare for. Look on the medical school website. What do they shout out about? Tell them that that's what you want to go. Let's look at how you can prepare for these types of questions. So the first thing I did to prepare for this type of question last year, I actually stole from another YouTuber who's a medical student called Karma Medic. I created a Word document. I looked up all the past questions that the universities I was applying to had asked. I looked on Medic Portal, Six Med, is it called Six Med? I looked up on Student Room, all the other types of forums for past questions that they'd asked at interview. I created a Word document with all these questions. I sort of put some of them together if they were very similar and I made responses for them. I then cut down to make it into bullet points because I was really scared if I'd written a script that in the interview I'd be so busy trying to remember word for word what I'd written that I'd mess up and that was so helpful. It meant that I was able to answer my questions eloquently, that I was able to fit in some key points that I know that examiners would be impressed with. So I really highly recommend you do this. This process is essentially the same as doing past paper questions. They can only ask so many questions so this way you're sort of covered So the way to prepare these responses is to use the acronym STAR. It stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. This is very important when answering questions, especially about work and voluntary experience. S, Situation, stands for what situation were you in? Where were you? What was your role? T is Task. What were you asked to do? What did you have to do? A is Action. What did you do? And I is a result. Did it have a positive result or did it have a negative result? If it had a negative result, what are you going to do to grow from that? How are you going to adapt next time? This is almost, if not more impressive than if everything had ended up going well. So I really suggest you do this. I spoke to many different doctors who gave me tips on how to answer medical school interview questions and every time star popped up. The second segment we'll talk about 
is preparing for knowledge-based questions. So this includes hot topics. Um, these are topics which are relevant to medicine or the NHS, which are in the media or relevant in the clinical world from antibiotic resistance to Brexit and how that's going to affect the NHS and medicine in the UK to certain ethical scenarios they give you. And one that most people might not prepare for, but the NHS and how it's structured, the legislation um, and its core principles. So the way I prepared for the hot topic was that I made several A3 sheets were in boxes. I'd summarize each specific hot topic. So I talk about the main points, the pros, the cons, and a conclusion. For example, this is a segment I made for the junior doctor contract, which I'm not sure is that relevant anymore. I spoke about the key points here. I then spoke about the concerns. I then spoke about the actions that had been taken and my opinion on the topic if I was asked for it. However, in order to create those boxes, what I did is that I went on the BBC, The Telegraph, The Guardian, so acclaimed news outlets, and I looked at any news articles that had been there in the past three months or year that seemed particularly relevant. So I looked at ones on mental health, I looked at ones on Brexit, I looked at ones on the problems that NHS is facing. I highlighted the key points, um, any statistics that would have been good to remember, and I put them in the boxes. You can't prepare for specific questions on the hot topics. You don't know that they're gonna say, how is the NHS structured? So the best way to prepare for this is to be informed. It means that if you're asked a question, you're able to bring that in. But it doesn't just have to be questions specific to the hot topics. If they ask you, what do you think are the challenges associated with being a doctor? You can talk about some of the statistics you read on the staffing vacancies in the NHS, and you can say, therefore, as we're understaffed, I can imagine the stresses involved of X, Y, and Z. And that way, you're answering questions in a more comprehensive way, which if you're looking to get those extra points or that extra flair or impress them a little bit more, uh, you might as well do that. So the way I prepared for the ethics section is in a very similar way. I created an A3 sheet, as you can see here, and I looked at each of the pillars of ethics and not just that, but how doctors deal with each of the pillars of ethics. So I'll link below a really, really helpful set of articles by the BMJ, which spoke about each of the pillars of ethics and what doctors should do in that case. The thing that I found most valuable for preparing for this question was looking up all the ethically challenging scenarios in past questions. For example, in Medic Portal, as I said, six med, and practice with someone, them asking you those ethically challenging questions and you using those pillars to help you come up with an answer. best way that I suggest you tackle an ethical question is never ever go straight to the answer. You have to show that you are able to look at both sides of a story. For example, if there's an ethically challenging scenario that presented with where a 15 year old is pregnant and wants an abortion, you might immediately think, yes, give her that abortion. You know, she shouldn't have to give birth if she doesn't want to. But don't go straight for the answer. Always examine how the other people in the scenario might feel. For example, the parents. Use the different pillars of ethics. Talk about autonomy. Talk about the justice in that scenario. Talk about maleficence, beneficence. It is important though that you answer the question comprehensively and then at the end, give your balanced opinion. The next segment I want to talk about is stations that are very specific to MMI. These are usually role plays. These role plays might come in the form of breaking bad news, conflict resolution, or just interacting with a colleague or something like that. I found conflict resolution role plays gruelling. I hated them. best best tip I have for role plays is to research all the different questions that, that are out there concerning role plays. Two, look at example videos, think about what was good, think about what was bad, come up with the strategies for each of those role plays. Think about 
what you're gonna do if you're given that situation. And three, practice. This might seem weird. Ask your mum, ask your boyfriend, which is what I did. Ask your friends, say, look, I'm really nervous about my interview. Is it okay if you just do this role play for me and then mark me on it? Tell me what I did well, tell me what I didn't do well. And practice your strategy. See if it works. What can you develop? What can, what should you not do? And my last tip for preparation, and um, before I go on to what you should do on the day, is research very thoroughly how the medical school you're applying to conducts their interviews. What I did is I messaged a girl in the year above who also applied to the same university, asked her what their interviews were like and what they usually involved, because medical schools have quite distinctive interview styles. So it's good because it means that you can prepare specifically for that medical school. However, bear in mind, it does not mean it will be like that on the day. Let's look at on the day of the interview. If you have been given an interview, you should be really, really proud of yourself. It's very difficult to get even one interview for medical school. And if you've gotten this far, it's because you have a chance at getting in. After you've prepared and assimilated the information on your motivation, your voluntary work experience, ethics, hot topics, you want to make sure to practice, practice with whoever, whoever. Obviously they won't be as accurate as the interviewer is going to be, but any practice is really helpful. For example, at first when I had to answer questions on why I wanted to do medicine, I was so awkward about it. But after saying it five, ten times, it becomes so much more easy. After you've done the preparation and the practice, you want to have a look at your personal statement and anything that you've talked about in your personal statement. I had a look through those because I did this essay in March of year 12. Now, come the 23rd of January, my second medical school interview, I had no clue what I had written. So it was very important that I read it just in case they asked, so talk about something you researched in, in medicine. And I wanted to talk about this essay, I would have had no clue what to say. third thing you want to do is you want to get a good night's sleep. If you get five hours sleep because you were too busy revising during the interview, your brain is not going to be as aware and alert as it should be. Honestly, I'd put getting a good night's sleep over doing last minute revision. Next tip, have a good breakfast. If you're hungry, you won't have the energy you need to perform well. And also stay hydrated. Something that I did, which might be a bit extra, is that I took vitamin supplements leading up to my interview and also my A-level exams. Who knows if they did anything. can revise that morning, just look over some of the questions, some of the key points. What I did is when I took the train down to one of my medical schools, I would just cover up the responses to my questions and say the responses just so that I hadn't completely forgotten what I was meant to say. So I'd say one hour before your exam maximum should you be revising. After that, get your body into a place where you're feeling calm. Make sure to dress smartly. So I dressed in a grey jumper with a shirt and my school skirt. Boys were in suits. When you get there, you have to fake it till you make it. Act calm even if you're not calm. Smile. It will just psychologically make you feel a bit better even if you feel nervous. Now let's talk about your MMR strategy. When you're waiting outside, you will see a prompt. In one of my interviews, I had three minutes to look at the prompt. In one of my interviews, I had one minute to look at the prompt. Read it carefully and think about what it involves and what you're going to do. One of my biggest tips that I also have is to remember to be energetic, to be enthusiastic, to be smiling. Honestly, if you come across energetic, if you come across enthusiastic, if you smile, they're going to be like, wow, they se she seems like such a great person and someone who just comes across really dull. Um, lastly, remember to always introduce yourself and always to shake their hand at the end. Additionally, do not focus on what's going on in another station. If you hear someone screaming, if you hear someone coughing, if you hear someone saying an amazing answer, do not pay attention, keep on going. Another thing is, 
it's completely fine if one, two, three stations go badly. What you have to do is as soon as a station finishes, do not dwell on the fact that it didn't go well. Think that each station is a brand new fresh top. And believe me, I also had a few stations which I felt really shaky on. They're not expecting you to be perfect. They're expecting you to show that you're enthusiastic, that you've prepared, and that you can do the best you can in a situation with what you have. I hope that was somewhat helpful. I'll include all the links to any websites that I found had really helpful tips when I was preparing for my interview. If anyone wants any specific videos for specific parts of the MMI or panel interview, I'm more than welcome to do videos on it in the future. Once again, I just want to congratulate you on getting an interview to medical school. If you have already, you're nearly there and you deserve this opportunity. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys maybe if you decide to come to Nottingham. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. It was just a quick run through of some of my biggest MMI tips. Let me know if it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching.